It's part six of our conversation with Rick Emmett. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Stream Music. When I was a young man and I was making the transition from being a guitar player who, you know, initially it's you know, like, here's the Beatles on Ed Sullivan. And now everybody wants to be a guitar player. Like I'm 10 years old and it's like, Ooh, I want, I want to be that, you know? Uh, and it's essentially, they're going to strum their guitars and pluck a few notes, but make pop songs and, the girls and are going to scream, and this is going to be great, right? So that's where it starts. But then along comes, you know, you're playing in a basement band, and you're meeting guys in high school, and they're going, well, have you ever heard of, uh, you know, Clapton's Blues Breakers album, the Beano record? I'm going, no, well, what's that, you know? And so now it's like, oh, well, you know, this guy, this guy can really play guitar in, in a serious way. And he's playing Freddie King licks. So if you're going to get into Eric Clapton, you better start to understand Freddie King. And, you know, and once the Yardbirds is on the table, now that we've got Clapton and Beck and Page, and where are they going to go and what are they going to do? And, oh, man. And so the world is exploding when you're 13, 14 years old. All of Hendrix is happening. And so now, you know, I'm not just going to be this guy figuring out, you know, cowboy chords on a guitar and, and playing folk songs. You know, it, it's the, the world has exploded. And now along come the English progressive bands. And you've got guys like Steve Howe, who was a huge role model for me. And he's playing double neck guitars and he's playing arch top jazz guitars with a different part. And then the next song he's playing, uh, you know, a, 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 la a Fender steel guitar and through an echo machine. And I was going, okay, this is what I want to do. This is this eclecticism is something that but you, you need the basket for it. Like if, you, if you're in a band like Yes, that's the right basket for all of that eclecticism, right? You can't do that if you get into a band called Triumph. You could try. They might allow you enough rope to hang yourself to do a classical piece. Yeah, yeah, your little jazz song. We'll stick that at the end of the record. Sure, Rick. You know, uh, they, would, they would indulge me and they would allow a certain amount of it. But Triumph was not going to be a band like, yes, it didn't have a drummer like Bill Bruford. It didn't have a bass player like Chris Squire. You know, that's not what it was. It was going to be what it was. And one of the things you learn in a professional, you know, show business life is it's not really good to try and bang square pegs into round holes. Like, don't try to make it what it isn't. Just let it be what it is, you know. So, um, yeah, you know, the whole thing of, of, of oh, I was managing a, a wide variety of things. I'd like to reduce it to this which is, I have a lot of limitations. I am a very humble, modestly talented kind of guy. But sang in the choir when I was a kid, understood the idea of singing as this kind of body, mind, spirit connection thing from early on. Along comes the guitar. Now I'm applying that singing stuff to this guitar playing stuff and it grows exponentially because of the connection of the two. But one of the other things that I'm doing right away is I'm sitting down and I'm writing a song. I, I learn two chords. I write a song. I play it for my mother and my mother goes, you are a genius. That's incredible. You're great. It's two chords. It's a piece of shit, but my, <laughs> but my mom is doing what good moms should do, you know, patting my back until my head starts to swell and making me think that something great is going to happen here. Right. So now I've got three things, you know, I got the singing, I got the guitar, I got the writing and they're all kind of growing at the same time. And I think it gives people this impression of, you know, that the, what's the old expression, you know, the sum is greater than the parts, you know, like, the, like, it is a question of this in integration that occurs that creates an impression of, wow, that's impressive, you know, but, you know, in a way it's, it's just who I am and what I do. And I don't think of it as being extraordinary at all. I keep coming up against my own limitations all the time. You know, I can write above my head. And when it comes to say jazz guitar pieces, I do it. I, you know, my brain can lead me to music that I can't play. And so I have to really, really work to try and get to the point where I can. And sometimes 
thank God for digital technology, you can record something and you can paste it all together now and you go, okay, good, now I can learn how to play. <laughs> like when Glenn Gould would edit his stuff, he was doing it because he was choosing unbelievably great, you know, things and creating something that was, you know, classic. For me, it's like, you know, that one's got a mistake and that one's got six mistakes. And so let's edit them all together so we can have one with no mistakes and then I'll learn how to play the one with no mistakes. So <clears throat> when I taught at Humber, I had a student, his name was Nathan Whitney. And uh, Nathan was an incredibly conscientious, great student. And he was just an unbelievably great guitar player. And he could play anything. And plus, he could read music. He could read fly shit. He, the kid was, he was a great player. I thought, this, he's going to probably be a studio cat. That's how good he is, you know. Um, and he, he, but he was working all the time. While he was still in college, he was getting gigs in country bands. And he, and he had that whole thing down. So country players that are at the level of, like, Brent Mason and, and, you know, country pickers like that. Like, Nathan could play that shit. And, you know, like a Keith Urban guy, no problem. Except he, couldn't, he didn't sing like Urban at all, but, but he could play that, that just great quality guitarist. So um, time flies, and, and uh, you know, I'm not teaching at the school anymore. Nathan lands a gig years later. He's now playing in Thomas Rhett, Thomas Rhett's band. So Thomas Rhett. His dad had been a great writer in Nashville, understood about the hierarchy there. Thomas, the kid, grows up. You know, he really understands about writing great country songs for the charts. So Thomas, when he launches his career, he's good right out of the box. It's going good. And, and in fact, Nathan ends up getting his the gig as his guitar player. They're on Saturday Night Live a year and a half ago, and I'm yelling at my wife, come here, one of my students is playing guitar on Saturday Night Live. This is Nathan Whitney. <laughs> so one thing leads to another. Nathan's got a pickup endorsement deal with a company called MJS, which I also have a, a, a deal with. And as things are, one thing leads to another. The guy that runs it is named Smitty. Uh, he's doing some telly work for me, and there's a body that's left over from him doing shit. There's an Esquire neck that I want him to put on another chambered body. So there's a guitar body left over. And I go, I don't want it, Smitty. You can keep it. And, you know, give it to a kid or something, like, do something with it. He goes, I'm not giving it away. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to do something with it. Nathan had had a guitar in there, and it had a Fender neck on it that he didn't like. So Smitty put Nathan's neck on my body, built this guitar, put these pickups in it. And he phones me, and he says, hey, will you do, like, a, a, an Internet video, like a, a thing, where you guys both play the guitar to kind of demo these new pickups that I came up with? And I said, yeah, sounds like fun, man. It's great, you know. In these COVID times, it'll be hilarious. We'll both be in little square boxes, and we can talk to each other, and we can, you know, but, but we're going to be end up playing the same guitar. So he goes, yeah, great. So Nathan, you know, he, he, back in touch with me. He comes to my house last week, and he says, uh, you know, well, f first, you know, this is like three weeks ago, four weeks ago. He says to me, you know, hey, I, so I've got this little sketch that I put together, and um, we'll do it. You know, this little, the, 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 this thing. So I go, yeah, yeah, great. You know, send me things. So he sends me the audio, and it, it's like just this little, but it, the tempo is like, I, I want to get this so you can hear it, the audio. Can you hear this? You hear that on the, so it's like, it's about 85 beats a minute. So it's like, but it's this, like, it's country. So it's like the 16ths are going to be, you're going to have to be, uh, like, it's crazy hard to play. <laughs> I go, I can't do it. Like, I'm trying, and I think, so I'm talking to him on the phone, and I go, and Nathan, could we maybe just back it down to, like, 83 beats a minute? <laughs> and he goes, oh, oh, yeah, sure. Oh, absolutely, Rick. Yeah, we can do that, yeah. And then two days later, I'm going, Nathan, do you think we could, I think it sits pretty good at around 80 beats a minute. <laughs> He's going, yeah, sure, Rick, no problem. So finally I get it where I can kind of handle it. But, you know, we've set a date, but when I get back from the cottage from being on holidays, I'm going to have to record this thing with Nathan. And so when I'm going to the cottage, I go, holy shit, I'm going to have to take a guitar with me, and I'm going to have to practice every day. Just like, it's, a, it's only two minutes, and I'm only playing one minute of the two minutes, but... You know, if I'm going to do this, I got to go back to the woodshed like I'm a teenager again, just to get the chops, you know, up to the level of this this guy. So 
Anyhow, long story short, you know, he comes to the house. I, it, it's a really lovely afternoon where I'm playing way over my own head, but it's fun. It's kind of like somebody's thrown me in the deep end, and I just got to try to keep up with this guy that's a Olympic swimmer, you know. And um, I'm going, all right, I, you know, this has been uh, – so that's going to be on the internet. That, you know, that's uh, pretty soon. He's just editing it together now. But we shot the video. We did the audio. But here's the the thing of it all. He when he he says, I think it's we'll set aside five hours for the session for the audio and the video. We'll need five hours. And I said, Nathan, if it takes me five hours, I want you to take me out into the backyard and shoot me because this should only take a couple of hours tops. You know, uh, so. If I can't do it in a couple of hours, I'm going to be, you know, thoroughly embarrassed. And so when we did it, one hour, 57 minutes. <laughs> so I went, okay, the old guy still got it. I can still bring it home. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel and share our videos and buy a t-shirt, help support our channel. Link in the description of this video. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Street Music. Mm -hmm.